Oh, maybe I should, uh, I'm sorry. Okay, we are back live. And uh, Amanda, I gather we're going to do emergency preparedness budget, which is page 40 of council's printed package and page 49 of the public's uh, online agenda. Yes. Okay, so 2021 emergency preparedness budget. Um, we uh, received funding for um, COVID-19 measures um, at the end of 2020, I believe, for our 2021 budget. So this $23,000 in salaries and this $16,000 in miscellaneous expense uh, makes up that 39,000. And then anything additional that we've budgeted for will fall within that as well. Uh, okay, materials and supplies. Okay, materials and supplies. So we've put annual generator maintenance within the emergency preparedness uh, materials and supplies budget. Um, just because I felt that maybe it's time that we start planning for some of these things. And I believe there was a staff report with regards to the generators at the municipal office and the Paul J. Yakabuski Community Center. Uh, and then we have budgeted within the capital expenditure $71,000 uh, for generator repairs. And I'm trying to see my, oh, I'll just look at this. Um, so 41,000 is for a generator purchase and retrofitting. That's the CO Hall and South Fire Hall. And then 30,000 for PJYCC generator. And um, I believe um, when I spoke to Hillary, uh, he believed that it was would just be nominal numbers for uh, repairs at the municipal office. Uh, so if council has any questions. Okay, any questions from council on the emergency preparedness budget? Councillor Poplinski. Uh, yes, Mayor Love. Uh Dealing, you mentioned that we got uh, some money back from the COVID uh, expenses. So the 34,000, 34,161.02, would that, uh, would that be part of that money? Yes, we did receive um, almost 160,000, I believe, in 2020. So a portion of that was transferred. Uh, we'll cover these costs here within the 2020 actual this 34 okay. and then salaries relating to it we've asked staff to if there were any COVID-19 related uh, jobs that they were doing that they identify them on their timesheets so it falls uh, here as well so this so also on that uh, this dealing with the salaries then so the projected amount of 23,000 would also be anticipated for this year that is correct is that? yep okay Amanda, does that capture cleaning, additional cleaning costs uh, across all our facilities? Is that part of what mm -hmm. the salaries is capturing? Right. So um, it was the cleaning at the Paul J. Yakabuski Community Center and then some additional cleaning here at the municipal office and then some staff time. Um, uh, if the deputy uh, clerk does... CEMC alternate and the CEMC uh, need to put some uh, hours down that goes in there as well. Okay, uh, Councillor Poplinski. Yeah, my uh, other question relates to material. You mentioned some of the things we needed to buy. Was that part of the plexiglass that we had uh, purchased? This materials and supplies line right here that we've budgeted yes. for in 2021, that is generator annual maintenance only. Okay, but is there some place where we captured that uh, we're able to get compensated for the plexiglass? Uh, uh, I had asked everyone to identify their COVID-19 expenditures and I'll put it within this line right here. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, 
So Amanda is miscellaneous expense in 2020, capturing some of those COVID-19 expenditures? Correct. Okay, so plexiglass that has been purchased already would be in that 34,000 and anything we need to do going forward is anticipated to be about 16,000. Correct. Okay. Councillor Poplinski. Yes, just follow up to that because when I was speaking with the operations manager and so on regarding the plexiglass, which we still have in stock, there was some suggestion that there was only three sheets of it left. And uh, so there may not be enough to retrofit whatever we needed in the hall in Cumbermere. So I assume then that we, if we needed another two sheets or whatever, we could, we could buy it under that uh, grant. Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, any other questions on emergency preparedness budget, operating or capital? If I may, Mayor Love. Uh, sorry, Sue, you're the one I can't see right at the moment. Just give me a second. I'm gonna shift, I can shift people around. I discovered this. Okay, yes. Uh, just, just a clarification. Uh, uh, from the treasurer. So I, I notice we don't have advertising costs because usually we didn't have any. We can take, because we are, there is a requirement to advertise annually. It's not much. It's probably about a hundred dollars. Can we use that out of materials and supplies or out of public awareness expense? Uh, that is the advertising, the public, public education awareness. and awareness is right here. Okay. And that is for advertising? Yep. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. And just uh, for Councillor Poplinski's clarification, I just uh, received a text from Stephanie that the plexiglass has been ordered. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any further questions? Um, okay, I, I do have one question. I just wanna know about this generator purchase for the South Fire Hall and the Cumbermere Hall, 41,000. Is that going to be one purchase for both halls, a shared generator? Uh, I don't know who to ask that of because I'm not sure whose plan that purchase is. Is that the fire chief? I'd like to invite the fire chief if he would like to speak to it. Okay. If if he's available, could we see if he can come can in? Can you hear me? I, yes, I can. I Just give me a second. I can't see you, but I can hear you. Okay, I can see you, chief. Okay. Yes. Yes, the plan is to have a big enough generator run both the South Hall and the Cumber Recreation Center at once. So the power goes out, it covers one. So if you have two installations, we plan on having one. Okay, and, and 41,000 is enough to cover that? That's from what I understand from people I uh, did reference for last fall. That's for saying that should cover both halls and work well with that. And our plan is to do that this year? That's correct. Okay, I, I, I look forward to that <laughs> because it's been... Uh, it's been something that's been talked about for a long time. And I think it's very important that we get the generator installed so that both the fire hall and the, the uh, Cumbermere Hall can be used as emergency centers should we ever have an, a, an emergency and have a need to open the Cumbermere Hall as an emergency center. So I'm very excited to see this in the budget and that we will actually be achieving this project this year. Is there any other questions uh, on the capital for the emergency preparedness from council. Okay, I'm not seeing any. So thank you, Chief. I appreciate uh, your input there. Amanda, did you want to take us to the next budget? Yes, I do. <laughs> All right. Is it Parks and Rec? Parks and Rec General Admin. Okay. All right. Page okay. 42 for council and for the public. Page 51. 51. Okay. Thank you. Take, go ahead, Amanda. Amanda. Okay. Take it away. Yes. Uh, 2021 Parks and Recreation General Admin Budget. So this is the budget that just covers some um, office and training and, and um, uh, I guess office materials for uh, Parks and Rec in general. Um, I don't know. Uh, about any big surprises here. Convention and seminar training costs. That's the uh, Ontario Recreational, I think it's the ORFA registration. And then, uh, and then we um, get um, 
we get a freebie for we pay for a membership and then we get two people to enroll into the the seminar um again try to keep the budget in line with the 2021 budget um mv promotional material that's just extra advertising or um depending on what kind of activities or what kind of functions we have um that's uh, an area to have some money if we need some additional uh, promotional materials uh no capital expenditure and just uh, again a six thousand dollars into capital reserves for recreational building renovation and replacement if there's any questions from council okay any questions from council councillor poplinski yeah just uh, with respect to the staff training what's that uh, what's that about uh staff training um i think stephanie will have to speak to that um, there are training opportunities through Parks and Recreation Ontario, and I'd like to sign myself up for one of their training opportunities this year. They're generally between three to five hundred dollars a course, so I'd like to start with one. Okay, thanks, Stephanie. Any further questions on Parks and Recreation General Administration? Okay, not seeing any. Um, Let's move to, uh, I guess, is it Mad Valley Programs and Events, events. Budget? Okay, Correct. page 44. Sorry, page 44. Page, sorry, page 53. In 53 the, for the bench. public, 44 for council. Okay, so 2021 Parks and Recreation, Mad Valley Programs, Events, Budget. Um, so this is our uh, Canada Day Community Christmas Party and Swim Program budget. Um, Canada Day is offset by um, uh, grants that we receive. Uh, so that expenditure is offset in the revenues by um, funding from uh, the federal government. Community Christmas Party, um, that is offset by revenues. Um, so although we budgeted 13, we uh, spent nothing, we received nothing as well in the, um, on the revenue side. So it cancels each other out. So we did budget again this year. Hopefully, uh, who knows what could happen by December and hopefully we'll be able to get together and, and um, have a celebration. Uh, swim program salaries, again, same thing, offset by revenues and um, uh, user fees and grants uh, received by the uh, federal government um, and materials and expenses, um, swimming related um, badges and uh, materials needed for the program. And if council has any questions. Okay, any questions from council? Councillor Poplinski. Yes, I don't have any questions, but I would just ask that the Canada Day, Canada Day grant be, be uh, given fairly across the, the township to the various areas? I do believe that we have already um, established uh, from the previous couple of years um, that the, the, the parties um, that wish to participate, they um, provide us with some numbers and we do um, provide them with a budget. Uh, Stephanie, is could you maybe uh, give us a little more information on that in terms of what was asked for for 2021? Sure. Um, again, the, the groups are again unsure with what they're wanting to put forward. So when I sent the email out again, this grant was applied for in November um, last year. And um, it was very unknown then, um, but they said they'd like to try to run. So they've left it the same as the year previous. So Last year, under COVID restrictions, um, monies were given out to each group to house bands um, at, at each of their locations. There were some small programming run um, locally, as well as the Canada Day fireworks. The fireworks have been ordered, um, but we're all we're waiting to hear about the grant. It hasn't been confirmed yet, and uh, when we get that notification, uh, more information can come after that. So. Staff has kind of planned to go ahead with the small events that will run 
um, and they could run with COVID, um, such as the bike parade and uh, the swimming, or sorry, the uh, fishing along the lake shore, that kind of event. Um, that way we're not, you can do it by yourself distanced um, and we can still provide that as an activity to our uh, local people. And there was good uh, response last year from the little bags that were given out for people to fish on their own. So those are just little things that are done. Um, and of course, Wilno, Cumbermere and Barry's Bay um, have all agreed that they'd like to go ahead and try something. They just unfortunately don't have a good handle on what that can be. Okay. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, maybe uh, it, through the process of connecting with the other municipalities uh, that you've initiated, there'll be some ideas that can be shared back because I'm sure that our, our volunteer groups are looking for ideas that they can bring recreational opportunities to their community, but do so in a safe way. So I'm hoping that, that there may be some sharing of ideas across the municipalities that are getting together to have that discussion. And, uh, you know, you'd be able to bring us back some things that uh, they can consider, because I know they want to uh, do things. It's just how do you do, what do you do, and how can you make sure that you're doing it safely within the guidelines of public health? Okay, uh, anything further on the uh, recreational, the Mad Valley programming and events expenses? Okay, I'm not seeing anything. Let's move on to the Paul J. Yakubowski Community Center on page 45 and 46, which is pages. <laughs> I'll let Sue tell us what pages they are. Should be able to figure this out, but is it 54 and 55? Sorry, I thought I'd pushed my mute on my cord. Uh, page 54 is the beginning of the PGY Community Center budget. Okay, 54, and then the capitals on 55. Okay. Okay, Amanda. 2021 Parks and Recreation PGY Community Center budget. Um, again, um, trying to keep the 2020 budget. Uh, numbers uh, to match the 2021 where possible. Um, we have a miscellaneous building expense. So we budgeted 25 for masonry repairs. Sorry, I can't see because you're all in my way. Let me just see if I can see. Uh, masonry repairs, tables, gravel around buildings, and uh, fire rated doors. Uh, to replace some fire rated doors. Um, and some of those expenditures were identified within the building condition assessment report. Um, we have uh, continued with the Zamboni maintenance and expense and Zamboni fuel costs and hope that um, in the fall and the, the winter of 2021 to 2022 that uh, we will be able to be operating up again. The ice plant and compressor, that's always a hit and a miss. Uh, so we budget 15, we only spent 39, but again, it's one of those budget lines that goes up and down and up and down. Uh, so you never know when there might be something decides to break on us. Uh, arena cleaning supplies and maintenance. So uh, a little bit up last year, but then it offset in the revenues by a transfer of the COVID-19 safe restart funding uh, that we received. Um, let me just move down here. Okay, ball field maintenance. Um, so hoping to do some repairs on the ball field um, with uh, the fencing and um, some sand, some better sand, um, some upgrades there. These uh, negative line items here for liquor and beer purchases from 2020 actuals, those are canceled checks that have therefore offset the, um, the expense lines. So it brings it into a negative, the expenditure. Um, within the equipment purchase and other expenses, we have budgeted for some tables and chairs to be replaced. Um, we try to do a little bit every year so that we can 
uh, eventually get to uh, better uh, chairs that are plastic and more resilient. Uh, this says Zamboni roof repair. It's actually the Zamboni room roof repair. The Zamboni's roof does not need to be repaired. Uh, we've budgeted 2000 for a screen. It wasn't completed last year, so we're, uh, because everything was closed down, it wasn't deemed to be necessary. So we've put it in again for this year uh, in hopes that we will be able to open up uh, and be able to rent out the facility. Uh, 1300 for rink board maintenance is uh, something we typically uh, spend, but again, last year with COVID, uh, we weren't able to bring some of that in. And then we have a capital expenditures line of $76,000, which involves $60,000 for the rotating sign replacement, $10,000 for a floor scrubber, and $6,000 for the roof above the doors to get started on engineered plans. So if council has any questions first on the operating, we can go through that and then we can discuss capital and capital reserves. Okay, so let's start with the operating on uh, page 4554 for the public. Any questions on operating? Councillor Wilmer. Yeah, just uh, two brief ones. Um, just wondering, first of all, does this budget reflect um, any additional costs that may be incurred um, operating the arena over the summer as a COVID uh, testing site? Has that been thought of when this has been uh, put together? That's, so, that's the first. Sorry, go ahead. So what was budgeted was um, what we had budgeted um, for kind of in the same line as last year with the thoughts that we will be operating. So right now we know that the uh, facility is closed to the public. And so some of those lines will be able to capture um, the needs of the staffing and the cleaning of the facility if we are operating as, as a vaccine site. Okay, thank you. My second question was just on the uh, the building hydro. Um, in 2020, we had 105,000. Um, our actual in uh, tw 2020 was only 80, but we did shut down the arena early. Do you really think that 95 will is accurate? Because I, I know we must have based the um, 105 in 2020 on the year prior budget. Um, so I'm just wondering it's unusual to see hydro costs going down. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, facility has been closed um, and it, uh, we do foresee that it will be closed for a little bit longer. So it will not be operating the same, at least for the first quarter of this year. Um, and therefore we don't have the um, we don't have the heaters in the rink stands uh, running, which are a big draw on the uh, building hydro. So um, I do feel that the 95,000 will be adequate um, unless, uh, you know, there's been talk about vaccination sites. Will they be running 24 hours? I don't know, but that's something that I'm not sure how we would address that. Okay, no, you're right. I had a bit of a brain cramp. I was forgetting that we're in 2021 and we're still closed. So yeah, your mm -hmm. answer is correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. Anyway, thank you. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm just wondering if staff, because we, and I'm trying to remember how long ago we did this. It was, I think a little over a year ago, we changed how we were doing hydro and we went to a different process for all our buildings. I'm wondering if, at some point uh, this year, staff could maybe look at whether we've had any cost savings through, and I can't remember what it was called, but through the system we switched to. Uh, and, and if that is having an impact on, on our hydro bills across all of our buildings. Sue, do you recall what it was called? It was a pricing system, wholesale something or other. I don't remember the acronym. Uh, we did reach out. I reached out about a month ago, I believe, maybe a little bit more than that, to the representative that had done the presentation to council 
to see how we can determine and come back to council uh, to demonstrate if there had been savings. And she said, we really didn't have enough of a baseline just yet. So possibly once we have the full year, we'll be able to bring that to council to show the difference. Okay, well, once we do have a full year, I would like to see um, what what impact it's had, if any. I, I see numbers that appear to be lower. I don't want to just say it's, it's because of that contract. It could be, but uh, as we all know, hydro prices have been going up and down like crazy throughout COVID, and it's been very difficult to uh, uh, identify if there's been cost savings through any of us who are paying their, our own home bills. So I'm not sure whether there's been place, price fluctuations through that contract as well or not, but it would be good if once we get a year under our belt, if we could get a report back to council, we'd certainly like to know if that decision was worthwhile. If I may, Kim. Um, sure. I did do a breakdown monthly for the PJY specifically. I can forward that out to council. Um, I've got it updated to January 2021 so far, um, and it, the only building in, that you're you're referring to will be difficult to understand is the arena, and only because when it's it's hard to judge if we're saving money because the building shut down as well. Um, so it's it, it won't be a good example, but at least it'll give council an idea of month to month what it is. I can forward that out after. Okay, or even just save it until the, the report is done, Stephanie, so that we can look at your numbers and then also look at what comes back to us in terms of the wholesale energy contract that we engaged in. Sue? Uh, if I may through the chair, I just looked at the email and it is Ontario Wholesale Energy. Thank you. I couldn't remember the details. I just know, knew we'd done it and I'd like to kind of get an update on that when it's available, when we have a year under our belt. Okay, any other questions on operating at the Paul J. Akabuski Community Center? Uh, Councillor Bromwich? Oh, maybe your hand's not up. I'm sorry, sir. It's, it's okay. No, I was just uh, blocking out the sun here. <laughs> okay, I thought it was your hand up. If there's no further questions on operating, how about any questions on the capital budget? I'm not seeing any questions on the capital budget either at this point. As council will recognize, we are putting a significant amount of money into reserves in preparation for the renovation work that does need to occur at the uh, Paul J. Jakubowski Community Center on the, the ice surface and the ice plant. And uh, while we have put the, the health and well-being of our community ahead of uh, the need to do that renovation this year in order to ensure that our largest facility is available as a vaccine, a vaccination center, we do still have that project uh, that needs to be done going forward probably in the 2022 year. So we are preparing for that. We are doing what we can to be ready. Anything further on the capital budget? Okay. All right, then um, I guess, Amanda, let's move on to the Cumbermere Community Center budget. Page 47 and 48 of council's printed package. And I'm gonna take a wild guess and say that it's page 56 and 57. You are correct. For the public. Yes. 56 and 57. Okay, Amanda. Okay, so uh, 2021 Parks and Recreation Cumbermere Community Center budget uh, salaries is uh, significantly lower in 2020 actual to the budget. Um, again, because the facility was uh, inoperable uh, due to COVID-19. Um, and we have not been able to rent out a lot of it um, or rent it out as we normally would so far within this um, first couple of months of this year. So uh, we increased the salaries a little bit, but um, uh, not to the levels that it typically operates at. Um, okay. Uh, telephone. Um, 
that is telephone and internet. So we are looking at the possibility of installing um, Wi-Fi at the facility if it makes sense, if it will be able to operate for this year. Otherwise, uh, maybe something that could be um, delayed until next year. Um, outdoor rink supplies. Uh, we've increased that by approximately $5,000 for a pump and a hose so that there will not be a struggle to uh, be able to get the outdoor rink uh, ready uh, when it is needed. Um, Cause that can be a struggle sometimes finding a pump and uh, a hose um, readily available. And then we have budgeted 500 for kitchen design um, this year and a thousand dollars for stairway treads because the stairs can be um, quite slippery um, as you're going up into the facility. And then we have a capital expenditure of fifteen thousand dollars, five thousand for bar rebuild, and ten thousand dollars for fence line replacement. And that's the fence line that is um, in the field that sort of splits the facility from the um, the field in the outdoor rink. So if council has any questions on the operating and then we can move to the capital. Okay, any questions uh, on the Cumbermere Community Center operating expenses? Okay, I'm not seeing any. How about on the capital budget? Okay, again, I'm not seeing any. Um, I'm wondering, Stephanie, I don't know if you've done the prep work on this, but the fence line replacement, is it going to include a gate? Or is it just going to be more of the same kind of fencing that we see there right now? The quote that we got, we didn't necessarily include a gate, no. Okay. Will it be the same kind of fencing though? No, I'm hoping it will, it will be more of a, a, a fencing that you would typically see at a ball field. Okay. All right. So that's good to know. It's a different kind of fencing. It kind of explains why it would be $10,000 then. Thank you. Answer. Okay. Is there any other questions on that capital budget? Okay. I'm not seeing any. So let's move to our next one, which is railway station budget pages 49. One second. And... 50 of councils and I will assume, oh, let me try to turn pages here, page 58 and 59 for the public. There, okay. Amanda. Great, so the railway station expenditure budget. Um, okay. So salaries uh, for the railway station is typically the um, summer students going into Thanksgiving and that is then offset by the Canada Summer Jobs Grant. There is some cleaning salaries there as well for the for that line. Um, I'm just trying to look here. Uh, this negative line here for the 2020 actual again that is um, canceled checks. Um, and then let's just go down here. Um, the station keepers have uh, notified us that they no longer need the $2,500 seed money. Um, so we've removed that from the budget. Um, we've budgeted a small amount for haunted house. Hopefully we'll be able to operate this year. Um, $1,000 for MV visitor map um, for some upgrades. And um, we did have, oh, right, the building condition assessment, but that's taken part in the general budget. So um, yes, that is the railway station budget. Are there any questions on the operating? Uh, yes, okay. Uh, questions on operating, Coun Councillor Poplinski. Uh, yes, thanks, Mayor Love. In the past, and even going back to last year, the station keepers, who I think are doing a very good job, require or asked about uh, the possibility of having uh, the uh, 
the uh, toilet uh, bathroom facilities increase the services in the park there or nearby. And I know in the past there's been many different groups trying to get, uh, you know, extra washrooms. And uh, from our, from my experience and spending some time at the train station there, I found that most people that came into the train station were there to use the washroom. And I think it's put a lot of big pressure there that I think we need to have some sort of a plan or certainly a discussion moving forward as to what we're going to do with that situation, because I think it's long overdue. And I would love to hear from other council members as to how they want to proceed with this. But we, I don't think every year we can just forget about this need and not talk about it and perhaps come up with a plan. It's an expensive thing. I know how much money we spent down at Lakeshore Park for the washroom, but I think we have to start somewhere and and um, get it back onto the agenda. Uh, Sue? Yes, uh, thank you for bringing that up, Councilor Poplinski. Um, the president of the club as well as Sheila uh, Dunn uh, came and met with me uh, to review the terms of reference. As you know, we review them every year and to prepare a report for council, they were advising us that they no longer needed the 2,500 uh, operating costs that as they had alluded at the beginning, uh, they were hoping through memberships and programming, they would be able to cover that cost, which they have now done. Uh, they did discuss uh, some red funding that they would qualify for. And in that discussion included uh, whether or not we would be looking at um, other ideas for the washroom facility. So that would be a separate meeting that would be coming forward uh, to council uh, with some suggestions. Okay, so something will come forward as a suggestion because location is one of the first things we would have to determine what the location would be, whether or not it can be uh, readily connected to water and wastewater services and then what kind of washroom facility that would be. I'd certainly hope we could find one or come up with something that was a little less expensive than what it cost us for the one in Lakeshore Park. Um, but uh, I gather if that's information that's going to be worked on over the course of this year, then that's something that could be factored into uh, saving towards it in next year's budget and subsequent budgets to get that done. Is that my understanding? Is that what you're looking at, Sue? Uh, yes, that's uh, probably the way it will work. Yeah. Okay, so it's probably not going to happen instantly. But uh, if there's if it's if the work the groundwork is is done, then uh, that would allow for staff to provide council with some idea of what that project would cost and then it can be considered in future budgets. So it's not been lost, it's just a matter of when that can be done. Uh, any, oh, Sue? Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to add that as part of their first step, uh, the group had also reached out to the BIA for comments as well. Okay, well, that seems like a very good idea to, to get them working together, especially on this kind of a, a project that will have an impact on both the businesses and on the railway station museum. Okay, so we'll look forward to something coming back on that in the future. At the moment, we don't have anything budgeted for it. And uh, I guess, uh, is there any other questions on the railway station budget? I'm not seeing any. How about on the capital budget? Again, I'm not seeing any questions there. Amanda, could you take us to Lakeshore Tennis Budget, which is page 51 and 52. And I'm going to take a wild guess and say it's 60 and 61 for the public. Hope I'm right. Yes, it is. Thank you. Okay, 2021 Parks and Recreation Lakeshore Tennis Budget. Uh, again, we um, budgeted for salaries at the Lakeshore Tennis uh, Club. Uh, we have applied for um, summer jobs funding. Hopefully we will be successful. We had uh, some students working down at the tennis club last year and it was uh, 
we thought felt that it was very success, successful. They were there to take um, questions and concerns from the public and be available um, to take registrations, um, help people out uh, with the park if needed. Um, so they were very good students working there. We are always very lucky to have, uh, to get the students that we get here. They're great people to work with. Um, we have a capital expenditure here for $3,000 for tennis court maintenance and crack repair. And then again, we've budgeted $1,000 into the reserve as we typically do every year. Are there any questions from council? Okay, any questions from council? Amanda, I'm, I'm assuming that if we're doing $3,000 worth of maintenance that that's being drawn from the reserve? It is. Okay, thank you. So that's why we put a thousand in every year to make sure that we do have a fund in order to be able to do the kinds of repairs and maintenance that the tennis courts require. Uh, any questions from council on either the operating or the capital budget for the tennis courts? Okay, I'm not seeing any, so we'll move on to, oh, sorry, Sue. Uh, if I may, um, it's, it's a clarification question. I was looking for a tab I had put, but uh, apologies to the chair. It was under the railway station capital. We had budgeted in 2020 out of reserves, uh, 35,000 for the siding. Uh, we had decided we needed to complete the building condition assessment prior to moving forward. The building condition assessment um, has been approved through that grant. It is starting once the snow um, melts. I uh, just wanted to clarify, so we didn't put it in as a 2021 project because we're not sure if it's happening in 2021, but that is still in a reserve. And if it was to look positively with the building condition uh, assessment, is that something they would do in 2021? Or, um, I, sorry, I, I forgot to ask Amanda, I just caught it the other day. Uh, so I did... Uh I do recognize that it was there in the previous year. I did not uh, add it to this budget because, um, as you said, we're waiting to find out about the building condition assessments and see what happens there. Um, you know, there could be some severe um, issues there or something that they needs to be addressed before the siding um, internally or in the uh, roof structure or uh, whatnot. So um, I did not put it there because it is, it does come from reserves at any rate. So once we have those items uh, identified in the report, then uh, I think that uh, council and committee will uh, need to address those items. Um, and then we can make a decision to move forward on how to proceed. Okay, so I just wanted to confirm that it was in a reserve uh, for if and when it moved forward. Thank you. Okay. All right, so we dealt with Lakeshore Tennis and that leaves us with the parks budget on page 53 and 54, which for the public is page 62 and 63. Yes, it is. Amanda. Mm -hmm. 2021 Parks and Recreation Parks budget. So the salaries line here is um, we have uh, whenever uh, staff throughout the municipality in all the different departments do something within the parks range, um, the, the hours are placed into this budget here. It's also the um, flower watering uh, student that uh, completes that work, the salaries goes there. So do outdoor um, parks or um, roadside parks or um, outdoor facilities work. Um, okay. Uh, Lakeshore Park expense. We budgeted $8,000 for a roof replacement for the gazebo and the swim shack. Um, Kamenuskeg Lake Park, uh, roadside park expense. Uh, we just continued on uh, with a little bit extra this year uh, for maintenance. Sorry, I'm just gonna move my ruler here. Uh, Mayflower Park expense, uh, repairs for play structures, and then that's uh, where costs for pumping of the uh, washrooms is. Um, 
train and water tower expense. So that's our water bill. Uh, Barry's Bay wharfs, a little bit of attention for the Barry's Bay wharf uh, that it always needs repair. Um, I'm just gonna look here. CEO seniors, Cumber Mayor seniors, okay. Um, the Cumber Mayor Museum craft cabin expense. Um, I believe they need some work on their stairs, so we have increased that fund um, by $2,000 uh, for some attention. Hopefully we'll be able to uh, do some work there and then they'll be able to open up this summer. Uh, we continued on with the Cumber Mayor, or sorry, the Wellno Rank, the $5,000 that we have uh, provided to them annually. Uh, the $10,000, <clears> excuse me, $10,000 trail expense. So that's the uh, railway tracks, I believe, the, the trail along that way that uh, gets brushed and we brush up to $10,000 every year. Um, we've budgeted $10,000 for the Wadsworth Beach for an extension to the beach and uh, some upgrades to the change room as it hasn't been um, uh, given any attention for some time. And then $2,000 for uh, sports equipment for rentals. So um, uh, I believe I'll let Stephanie speak to that one. Yeah, and if you wouldn't mind just changing that word from rental to lend because I don't plan on renting it. Okay, I can do that. Capital expenditure, uh, $110,000, and that is for um, playground repairs. So that would be for a new playground in Barry's Bay. Um, there was a report from the community development officer uh, to apply for funding to replace or uh, purchase new playgrounds um, equipment in Barry's Bay and Cumbermere. So if that is successful, then this money can go back into reserves or be reallocated for something else. Um, does council have any questions on the operating? Okay, operating expenses for parks. Councillor Poplinski. Uh, yes, thanks, Mayor Love. I've got a couple of items. Number one, uh, to start off with the wharf, we have $1,000 for the wharf in Barry, Spain, also in Cumbermere. I don't feel that's even near adequate as to some of the repairs and things that need attention there. I would like that to be uh, reconsidered. Uh, I've got, uh, got uh, the, uh, so that would be one. I noticed the Crooked Slide Park is not even mentioned in here. And there's more than just maintenance and picking up garbage. And there's, there's some things that should be done. There was a building move from there last year and there was some suggestion that they would come back and sort of do a bit of more of a nuts trimming and cleaning and and perhaps where the building was maybe put some solid benches or something you know it needs some attention it's it's one of the focal points in the area we we uh, advertise it as one of the places to visit it's a place that's uh, greatly utilized and i think that uh, not to have a a line in the budget to deal with any of the work that needs to be done, I think is an oversight and we need to address that. I think that um, we've got things like uh, on here, uh, you know, $6,000 for the rectory in Cumbermere. I would love to know what's happening. Are we continuing in the, in the usual manner until otherwise notified or what are we doing there? Uh, I understand the property underneath it has been sold. And so uh, you know, it's still at a budget line, so maybe a little clarification would be very helpful. And um, yes, and, and as I ma I've mentioned, the Crooked Slide Park, so I'd love to hear comments from uh, the committee and council. Okay, uh, so let's start with the, um, the wharfs. Barry's Bay and Cumbermere. What you see in the budget is uh, funds to do minor repairs, but council, uh, because you don't see a, a, a projection going forward of what needs to be spent at both of these wharfs in your capital budget, 
Uh, I think Hillary has identified that both wharfs need significant work starting next year. Uh, the Cumbermere Wharf and the Berries Bay Wharf. I don't know if Hillary is available again. Maybe I'll ask and see if he, because he was the one who was speaking to the need going forward and how to approach that. We did identify 200,000 for 2022 for Berries Bay and Cumbermere on the capital okay. page. Okay, is it on there? Sorry, it I is. got... No, that's fine. I've got something weird going on on my yes I don't have that on mine but it's probably yes okay so there is money sorry I'm, I'm juggling between uh, an electronic version and <laughs> a paper version there is money uh, that has been identified that has to be spent for significant work to be done to both of those facilities Councillor Poplinski uh, in the immediate future, but at this point in time, I think that uh, staff is looking to do some minor repairs to keep them going for another year. Um, that is correct. Okay. And now I, I'm sorry, but what was your your Six, next uh, point? I mentioned I mentioned the Crooked Slide Park. Okay. So is it covered under parks in general in some way? I I. That I don't know. Thanks well, that's what I was going to ask yeah. ask Amanda about that. No, I don't see it anywhere. So uh, would the salaries to do any work there be covered under park salaries? Yes, the so. salaries go within those that line here in this budget. Okay, so not every park has a line item budget, uh, a budget line item, sorry. Um, it seems to be one that doesn't, but there are other parks that don't as well, so... I'm not sure why. Is that just based on traditionally where money has had to be spent and where it's been in other places where it's been covered under parks in general? I, I have no idea. I think if there was a planned, um, you know, major project or repair, then it would just be placed within the equipment purchase or other expense or as a capital expenditure. Um, and these other ones are uh, sort of ongoing um, matters or expenditures that take place annually. Okay. So there's no specific budget line for it. it um, Councillor Poplinski, are you proposing that there be uh, something added to identify some specific work that needs to be done? I, I, I think the way we could approach that would be to have our operations manager uh, do a uh, do a along with uh, any of the council or members that are wishing to be part of this do a review and when we're looking at spending ten thousand dollars on the extension change room and on Wadsworth Lake that's probably a very worthwhile venture as well but you know I'd like very much to uh, to help in this regard and and uh, others I would encourage others as well. I think come springtime, once the snow is gone, if we could visit the parks and have a look at some of these deficiencies and areas where right now, uh, you mentioned you got uh, money allocated for, for wages for people to work, but right now we don't know where they're going to be spending that time. So let's, maybe we should have a look at it in, and try and utilize the money in the places where it's needed most. Uh, Sue. Um, in the in the I, I could arrange a, a site visit. We could schedule a site visit um, just to review our, our parks uh, for sure. Uh, maybe in the interim under seven nine 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 six, just so as a placeholder, so that we don't lose sight of even the landscaping. Uh, if under Wadsworth Beach Extension Change Room, if we could add um, Crooked Slide Park, um, so that we don't lose sight of uh, you know potentially doing some work there. And then it could be identified then uh, during that review. Okay. And I'm just trying to double check something. Looking for. Okay. So there is also, um, it is proposed that we put $25,000 into parks and playground reserve this year. If something was identified through that process, we could redirect some of that 25,000 towards doing whatever work was identified 
uh, as needed at Crooked Slide Park. I mean, that would be what I would suggest that we do, but we won't really be able to identify that until the snow is gone and we can actually right. see the park. So for now, rather than trying to take a stab at what an amount might be, why don't we just uh, look at doing that, doing a park site visit once the snow is gone and we can assess the um, what the needs might be and we could divert money from going into reserves if there is a need for some funding to do some specific work at the park. Would that be acceptable? Well, I think that would work quite well. Actually. Okay, Sue? And I think as a placeholder too, I, I think I'll, I, I'll add to that site visit, uh, it might be a good time to do a review of our signage as well. Um, to see if okay. there's consistency in the signage that we have there and our signage requirements. Okay. Um, if we're doing parks, we should also consider going up to um, Reeves Park, which, what is the name of it though? I know it's not Reeves Park. Shoot. Up Park Lake Road? Yes, up the one up uh, at the end of- uh, I think it is called Reeves Park. Is, is it? it? Not? Okay. It is. It is. I, I don't know. Okay, then I've heard it called something else, maybe Stanley's Park? Yes, yeah, he was the Reeve. Reeve Park, yeah. Okay, well, there we go. Reeve Stanley's Park. There we go. We'll put it together as two. But I've heard it called by both those names. So we should make sure we go up there as well. I know there was some, last time I was up there, the, uh, the washrooms were not in the world's best shape. And I know staff did some work on them. But again, they may need some work as well. So if we could arrange a tour of all our parks, that would be helpful, I think, to get some sense of what may need to be done. Thank you. Okay. Now, was there anything else? Uh, sorry, Councillor Poplinski, was there anything else that you identified? Uh, no, I think we uh, fully addressed all the issues that I'd raised. Okay, thank you. Now, does it, oh, Councillor Shulist. Yes, uh, to you, Madam Mayor. Yes, I totally agree with uh, looking at the parks. Uh, Crooked Slide Park is definitely a historical landmark. And, uh, you know, first impressions uh, are, are great, especially on a site like that. So if there's any, any work that needs to be done there to make it, uh, you know, presentable and beautiful, that, that is, I'm definitely would support that. I, I do have a question on one, uh, one line, it's the CEO Senior Center expense, and we've got down to 56. And, and I know we were kind of discussing uh, uh, what to do with that building. Um, so what is this uh, $5,600 where, is that just to maintain it, to heat it so that, cause we're not renting it in any way, right? Thank you. Yes, at the moment it's not in use. So I believe, I, I don't, what, okay. sorry, I believe when we built the budget was a little while ago for the, this parks, um, I think it was back in January. So there, was no decision on what to do with the Cumnor Seniors, the Golden Year Center. Yeah. And so we had uh, put in some additional monies because we were not sure how things were going to proceed if there was going to be work that needed to be done. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Sue. Yes. If I may, Madam Chair, I think we also uh, were aware that um, there may be some in we had sent for some reviews. Uh, Mr. Bulow had done okay. some reviews and we weren't positive that all of the invoices had been received either. So I'm not sure if that might have uh, okay. a role in that as well. So the okay. increase in the no expense problem. is to, to ensure that we've covered the cost of any reviews of the structure, but it's not actually to okay. do any of the work because as was identified, it would take a significant amount of money to bring the structure back to a point where it could be usable as per uh, the use that we were trying to make of it, which was with the food bank. And even now to, mm -hmm. to look at the load capacity of the building, it would be an issue. So at this point, this is just has a, in a sort of a stasis position in regards to that facility. And I know it is something that can be considered in terms of going forward with the possibility of it being surplus to our needs. Mm -hmm. Can staff identify for me, is there, do we still pay an internet bill for that facility? We do not. No, okay. we don't. 
thank you. Because we were paying one for a while when we had a, a specific tenant in there. And I just wanted to make sure that we were no longer paying that um, because it does make far more sense for us to have internet available through a Wi-Fi out of the Cumbermere Hall. Okay, any other questions on, oh, Sue, sorry. Uh, not a question, just to follow up. Uh, so there was staff direction and it's coming back to the council and committee uh, that uh, the planning development and licensing uh, manager, as well as the deputy clerk, uh, were preparing a list of all of the uh, municipal lands and the treasurer has provided the impact sheet. Um, and we were to add that to that sheet coming back as well. Okay, are we likely to see that at the next council and committee council meeting? Council committee, I'm assuming, yes. Okay. okay. All right, any other questions on the parks operating budget? Any other questions on the parks capital budget? Okay. So we've, we've done a first pass of the budget. We've gone through everything in the budget, I think. Amanda, have we not achieved it all? We have. Okay, so at this point, Amanda, the only change that we made didn't actually affect the amount required for taxation because it was a matter of not drawing down a reserve. Correct. Okay. So did you want to go through some of the other uh, information you provided to council at this point? Um. I'm trying to remember. I, I believe I, I was just asked as sort of an addenda or like backup material. Did council wish to discuss it? Okay, so I'm just looking at the agenda. Give me one second. All right, so I think the one thing we do have in front of us is the property tax arrears update. Uh, Council, would you like to, to proceed to just have a look at that at this point? Yes, please. Okay, so Amanda, maybe could you speak to your report, which is the property tax arrears update? So actually, this is the deputy treasurer's report. Oh. And it, I just presented Sorry. it back from what she had presented on January 7th of 2021, um, because there shouldn't be more there. We're not sure that there would be much change in it um, for the arrears. Um, okay, is Janice going to join us? I'm sorry, I didn't pick up on that. It was for the debt from the deputy treasurer. She's frantically trying to get those tax bills. That I wouldn't want. Okay. To no, no, that's, um, that's fine. She's doing what she needs to do. But I know that there may be some, uh, some questions about, um, we do have a reserve line. Um, I forget what it's called, the working fund reserve. I mm -hmm. believe. And that fund, is, it doesn't get touched. It is our reserve fund to ensure that the monies that we budget for and uh, bill for and that are not collected as per the tax arrears report, it offs that reserve offsets these monies that do not come into the municipality. So, um, you know, as she's saying, a $1.4 million uh, arrears um, we have 1.2 million in a reserve to offset that. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so I, I guess as we can see that there were um, larger arrears in, from 2020, but in part that's going to be a result of, of uh, council's decision to not aggressively pursue individuals who went into tax arrears in the first part of the year uh, because of the situation with COVID and, and unemployment being fairly um, significant at that point in time. Um, since the end of the year, I do believe we have had some discussion in committee meetings about um, turning that around and, and when the when staff get the tax bills out, I am assuming they're going to, there's going to be some focus on connecting with individuals who have arrears and setting up payment plans and getting people back on track. 
because the significant arrears we see for 2020, we didn't have quite as large a number in 2019. And staff seems to have done a really good job of beginning to clear things up and getting people on payment plans going back, you know, from 2015 through to 20, 2019, basically. We have seen a lot of um, real estate transactions as well that have cleaned up some of these arrears. Um, okay. So that which, will... which is good because obviously every time there's a real estate transaction, the taxes end up being paid. Correct. Are there any questions from council uh, that maybe if you could direct them to Amanda, if Amanda can't answer them, then she can uh, get an answer for you from, from the deputy treasurer. Any questions on the arrears report? update. Okay, um, Councillor Bromwich, is your hand up? I'm sorry, you're such a small little square. Okay, no, you're shaking your head no. <laughs> Anyone else? Oh, oh, Sue. Oh my goodness. Everybody <laughs> got big now. again. Wow, she must have <laughs> turned that off. Oh, that's huge. Um, Thank you, Amanda. Wanted to uh, also coming out of, of the meeting, um, I, I did have um, a request from the deputy treasurer that council approve her recommendation to revise the interim tax bylaw that you passed at the last meeting, that it would come back on March 16th to modify the due dates to the end of April and the end of May instead of the end of March and the end of April. And that's to allow for the change between the software packages, uh, the software uh, system, sorry. Um, so it would, Normally, the tax bill would be going out today uh, or this week, and it would be due the end of March. So we're asking to give staff that extra few days to double check the systems, double check the numbers, and that the due dates would be the end of April and the end of May instead of the end of March and the end of April. Okay. All right. Um... So we need to do that. I just, I want to figure out where we're at in terms of, of moving forward with the budget. So we've done our first pass. Uh, does council want to um, think about it overnight, come back tomorrow and, and, and finalize any details with the budget? Or are, are you comfortable with the budget the way you see it? And are you prepared to vote on it? I need to know what you want to do. Um, in terms of that. And then we have all these other businesses that we have to tidy up as well. Councillor Bromwich. Uh, thank you, Sue, you, Chair. Um, looking at last year's uh, budget, we all kind of aimed for the dartboard with that one. Everybody came up with a figure, 2% usually was about the point. I looked up the GDP figures for anticipated GDP figures for 2021. They're all over the map because of the pandemic, but 2.1% seem to be the uh, predictable GDP growth of the country. And uh, to stay on top of our um, value for our dollar, I think if we went with a 2.1% increase, that would be not too inv inv invasive for the people to handle. And it would be, uh, I think, a fairly logical figure that Amanda has brought up to us. It looks like it might work. So I agree with the 2.1% lavy as you uh, did it. I just want to say it's a, really a pleasure to deal with this the way you've set it up, Amanda. Thank you so much. It was really easy to read, a lot less uh, invol involved. So thanks again. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I guess I'm seeking direction from council. Do you want a motion to approve the budget as it stands? Is there any part of the budget someone wants to go back and talk about? Uh, Councillor Wilmer. No, I would be prepared to accept the budget budget as it stands. I think the rate is good, and uh, we've had good discussion on it. And uh, I think uh, again, Amanda, as as Councilor Bromwich said, laid it out very clearly and succinctly. And uh, I think it's uh, it looks good, and uh, it's in a form that I'm willing to accept as is. Okay. All right, so we do have the one change. Do note, Council, that we did, uh, we are going to refurbish the uh, number 50 truck and we are holding off on taking the withdrawal from the unallocated reserve for the 45,000 for a new truck for the building department this year. 
So just recognize that that change was made. It is the only change and it does not affect the tax rate. Uh, Councillor Shulist. Yes, uh, to you, Madam Mayor. Yes, I'm quite comfortable uh, with the budget right now. It's very reasonable, well put together. Thank you very much. And we had some good, uh, healthy discussions on, on some of the topics. So I'm, I'm very, very comfortable in approving this uh, budget. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, so Sue, do you have a motion? Uh, yes, actually, there's a few resolutions because we would have to uh, accept the ones pertaining to the projects that council agrees for the gas tax fund for the OSIF funding for the curbside and transfer rates as well. Okay. And so then a motion to accept uh, at uh, the 2%. Yes. Okay. So, well, can we, so, so start, give us one and we'll go through them one at a time and get them done. Okay. That council approved staff recommendation to deem unit number 41, the 2010 Toyota Corolla as surplus. Okay, can I get a mover for that, please? Moved by Councillor Shulist, seconded by Councillor Poplinski. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? In favor. Okay, and that's carried. Okay, Sue. That 130761 of gas tax funds be applied to the 2021 Wolowski Drive construction project. Okay, could I get a mover for that? Moved by Councillor Poplinski, seconded by uh, Councillor Bromwich. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? That, that 100... Wait, one second, and that's carried. Okay, uh, Councillor Wilmer, were you in favor of that? Your mic is muted, sorry. Yes, I was. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to make sure that if you were saying something, I could hear it. Okay, so that one is carried. And Sue, the next one. That 177,671 of OSIF funding be applied to the Chepesky Mill Road construction project. Okay, could I get a mover for that? Moved by Councillor Wilmer, seconded by Councillor Bromwich. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? And that's carried. That council and committee recommends that council approve the 2021 draft curbside pickup area rate budget with a rate increase of 2.12%. Okay, could I get a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Bromwich, seconded by Councillor Wilmer. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? And that's carried. Council approved the 2021 draft transfer station area rate budget with a rate increase of 2%. Okay, could I get a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Bromwich, seconded by Councillor Poplinski. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? And that's carried. Okay, next. That council recommend, uh, sorry, that council approve the transition of the part-time payroll clerk to a full-time payroll office clerk beginning in September of 2021 and that the job description be presented to committee once completed for final approval. Okay, can I get a mover please? Moved by Councillor Wilmer, seconded by Councillor Poplinski. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? And that's carried. Sue? That council approve the deputy treasurer recommendation to revise the interim tax bylaw to modifying the due dates to the end of April and at the end of May to be brought back on March 16th. Could I get a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Wilmer, seconded by Councillor Shulist. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? And that's carried. And that, council, that council and committee recommends Sorry, I'll just say council. Uh, the council approve the 2021 draft municipal budget as presented, as amended, with a tax levy of tax levy increase of 2.1 percent. Okay, could I get a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Bromwich, seconded by Councillor Wilmer. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor. 
And that's carried. Okay. Uh, is there more? I believe unless the treasurer thinks I missed something that I put a resolution to the clarification that we needed. Uh, Amanda, did we miss anything? No, I don't think so. Okay, so our last two budgets are water and wastewater and we're not doing those today, but they'll be coming to, what did we decide the next? It was council and committee in April. Yes, council and committee in April. We will need to review and approve budgets for water and wastewater so that the uh, customer billing can go out in April. Okay, now was there any directions that we wanted to make sure were actually captured as well? Sue? Just had a question about uh, because we give notice um, and at what meeting are we proposing we would be doing like a formal presentation? Budget presentation? Um, um, the tax ratios have not been approved by the county as of yet, so I can't, um, okay. I can't uh, provide what the actual um, r rate is um, for the municipality. So I would hope, um, I know there's a meeting in two weeks via Zoom with the uh, treasurer's working group with the county, at which time they will be uh, approving probably the tax ratios and then that has to go to county council okay. for their right. bylaw and approval so I would think it won't be until mid-April by the time everything's all tied up Thank okay you. so could we do our buzz budget presentation at the second council meeting in April at the regular council meeting yeah as, okay, as long as I have the county's bylaw Okay. Well, if it's going to be done by the end of March, it'll be done at County Council at the end of March. So you would have it by then. Yep. Okay. I think that would be the plan. If everyone's good with that, that the budget presentation to the public will be the second council meeting in April, which is the regular meeting. Okay. Now, is there anything else that uh, we need to uh, make note of or that we haven't covered today that needs to be covered? Any, anyone? Uh, Councillor Wilmer? No, sorry. Oh, oh, sorry. I thought I saw your hand go to the side. So I was <laughs> trying to I make sure. You, I, I, I think you did, but it wasn't meant to. <laughs> okay. All right. So that takes us through our business for today. And I don't think we're going to need to do it tomorrow at this point because we've done everything we can do. Then if there's, Sue, is there anything further? Not for last me. chance, last chance. Amanda? Just like to say thank you to council. It was a team effort. We all did uh, our part and we all did a wonderful job. All the staff was excellent getting all of their numbers to me. So I uh, thank you for your uh, understanding, your patience and your time today. So thank you. Thank you, Amanda. You did an excellent job. And I know trying to deal with changing softwares and 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 all the things that are going on right at the moment as we modernize our municipality has made this certainly challenging and you you were hoping to go to the new software this year to do the budget but she did it all by hand on spreadsheets for us and did an excellent job and uh you know it was a privilege to work with you and uh, uh i'm the one that sort of checks all her numbers over and she did a great job it was fantastic so, and next year she's hoping to use our new software, <laughs> which will make it an mm. even, even better because it's just going to happen somewhat automatically. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully, fingers Hopefully. crossed. <laughs> but no, no, we know you'll get there. And I do appreciate all your hard work. Thank you. Um, so everyone, I guess what we'll do is our confirming bylaw and we won't need to have a meeting tomorrow. So confirming bylaw for, is bylaw 2021-22. As the confirming bylaw for the uh, council meeting, the recommendation is that the bylaw 2021-22 being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the council of the corporation of the township of Madawaska Valley at a council meeting of March 8th, uh, 2021. Um, yes, that's okay. I'm just making a change there as I go. Uh, could I get a mover please? Moved by Councillor Wilmer, seconded by Councillor Poplinski. All those in favor? 
And that's carried. The recommendation is that bylaw 2021-22 be given third and final reading this eighth day of March, 2021. Moved by Councillor Shulist, seconded by Councillor Bromwich. <laughs> All those in favor. And that's carried. Motion to adjourn. Moved by Councillor Wilmer, seconded by Councillor Shulist. All those in favor. And that's carried. And we are adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh,